Alhamdulillah, <laughs> يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فأنا أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد <تصفيق> يقول الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم ألم يعني للذين آمنوا أن تقشع قلوبهم لذكر الله وما نزل من الحق ولا يكونوا كالذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبل فطال عليهم الأمل وقصت قلوبهم وكثير منهم فاسقون الله سبحانه وتعالى said in the Quran has a time has a time not come for the believers أن تقشع قلوبهم لذكر الله that their hearts become humble and their hearts experience a form of humility and their hearts uh, exper and they, uh, experience a sort of submission when they hear the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course here the dhikrullah is referring to the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, has that time not come? When you start to hear the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that your heart start to tremble, that your heart start to submit to what you hear. And he said, أَلَمْ يَعْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تَكْشَعَ قُلُوبُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ The وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ This also refers to the sunnah. And when they hear the, the speech of the Prophet وسلم, and the commands and the prohibitions, that they do what they're supposed to do and they stay away from what they're supposed to stay away from. وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ And don't be like the people that were given the book from before you. Because the time it became long, the time between their prophet and them, it started to become longer. And then what did they do? They started to stray. They started to stray. They started to go away from the book of Allah. And they went away from the guidance of the messenger. And because of this, because of the straying and this going away from the guidance, their hearts started to become hard. Because uh, you know, the, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it brings that softness to the heart. Sitting down and reading the Quran with tadabbur, pondering over the ayat and trying to seek guidance from the Quran, it brings softness to the heart, to the heart, and it brings sakina, and it brings tumanina, it brings peace and tranquility. Allah bi dhikrullahi tadamainul kulu. Is not if it's not is it not with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa taala here in the Quran that the hearts become at peace and at ease, but their hearts became hard because they went away from that guidance. 
And then when you try to advise them and you try to tell them this is this is the guidance, this is what Allah sent down, this is what the messenger sent down, they don't want to hear it. They rather listen to what their desires tell them and follow what their desires say or what somebody else says. They no longer want to hear the guidance. And this is because of their straying away from the book of Allah, from their straying away from the from the guidance of the messenger وسلم, that their hearts have become hard. And he said, minhum fasikun. And he said the majority of them are what? Fasikun. Fasikun, it comes from the word fasaka, which means kharaja, which means to leave out of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِكُونَ اَيْ خَارِجُونَ اَنْ طَعَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَالرَّسُولِهِ That they left out of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. And the only way that we could truly benefit from this Qur'an, from this book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down, is so first off we have to understand, this is why it becomes an obligation upon every single Muslim to understand the Arabic language. If it's an obligation. This is not a, this is not something that you do if you want to do or you don't do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this Quran down in Arabic. It's an Arabic, it's an Arabic. It becomes an obligation upon every single Muslim to learn the Arabic language so he can understand the commands and the prohibitions. He can read the Quran and understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him. These English translations and these other translations are not gonna do it. The Quran was sent down in Arabic. So first off, it becomes an obligation for you to understand the Quran in its language, the language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it down, the language he spoke. The second thing is to understand it with knowledge, to understand the tafsir, to go and understand the ayat in this way that you can have tadabbur, that you can ponder, and you can read the Quran actually seeking guidance. Because that's the whole point. We're not just to read it, just to read it, just to get 10 hasanat for every haraf, just to read it. Oh, how many times did you read the Quran in Ramadan? Three times, four times, five times. But how much did you understand? And how much of that actually penetrated the heart? How much of it affected you? And that's the most important thing. It's better to read a little bit, pondering over the Quran and having it affect you and change your life than just read a little bit, than read a whole lot and with no change in your lifestyle. Because you're reading the Quran, if you're reading it and you're truly pondering over the meanings, you should be changing as a person. And Allah mentioned that he sent the Quran down for this purpose of what? To ponder it. He said what? Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyaddabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara ulul albab. He said this is a book. Kitabun anzalnahu that, I have, that we have sent down. Mubarak. That is a blessed book because you have all of the benefits. All of the benefit that you need in this life and the next life you find it in the Quran. You don't need to look anywhere else. It's Mubarak. Everything that you need to live your life, to be an upright person, to do the things that you need to do in this dunya, and the things that you need for, to prepare for the Akhirah, it's in the Quran. You don't need to look anywhere else. You have to go to the Sunnah to understand the Quran, but everything is in the Quran. Everything that you need is guidance. And it's a Kitab Mubarak. And that's the blessing. And then after that he said, لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ What? It's made to... For the, for, the, for, the, for the ayat, the verses, the ayat of the Qur'an to be pondered, to be thought about, not to just be read, you know, passively, with your mind thinking about something else, to be read where you're focusing on everything that you're reading, and you're focusing on, you're seeking the guidance when you're reading. You're not just reading just for fun, or reading just as a form of exercise for the mouth. So he said, لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِي وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ And for the people that have the strongest minds, that they, it will be a reminder for them, that it put, put, like, puts them back into the, when they start to forget a little bit, that the Qur'an becomes a reminder, that they can sit back and they can remember what it is they have to do and what it is that they have to stay away from. So this is the Qur'an. This is the book that you, most of the people here don't even pick up throughout the year. You pick it up in Ramadan, you start to read it a little bit, like I said, like exercise for the mouth, but you're not, is, is it really penetrating the heart? And you know it's penetrating the heart because your actions start to change and you start to become a better person and you start your actions start to become more upright. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said about it tadabbur and pondering the Quran. He said, He said, Will the people not ponder this Quran? What? Or do they have locks on their hearts? You go back to the previous ayah. The, the, the time between the Prophet and them became long, and their hearts became hard. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا 
if you got a kufl, a, a lock on your heart, where now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not even allowing the understanding of the Qur'an to penetrate your heart, that's a sickness, that's disease in your heart. This is something that we need to make tawbah from, and the only way that we can cure the sickness is with the Qur'an, because the Qur'an itself is shifa. It is a cure for all the diseases in the heart. All the ailments that we see in our heart, it's in the Qur'an. All the ailments and all the problems that we see in society, the cure is in the Qur'an. And the Qur'an is what causes us to be upright. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ صَالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ that this Qur'an, yahdi lillatihi aqwam. That this Qur'an guides the people to the most upright behavior, to the best behavior. وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And it gives glad tidings to the believers, because the believers are the ones who are going to read the Qur'an with understanding. And the believers are going to be the ones who read the Qur'an seeking the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seeking what they have to do and what they need to stay away from. وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ The believers that do righteous actions, and the lahum ajran kabira that they have a, a, a big reward with, the, with, the, with their Lord. So this is very, very important. It's, don't just pick up the Quran in Ramadan. If you're only picking up the Quran in Ramadan, if you pick up the Quran in Ramadan and you put it down after Ramadan, what does that say about you? Did you benefit from the book? Did you truly benefit? Did you get what you needed to get out of the Quran or were you just reading it? Just reading it like passively, just like you would read anything else. If you truly, truly, truly ponder this book and you seek the guidance, it's going to be a guidance for you. It's going to change you. And it's not just going to change you for Ramadan. It's going to change you throughout the year. It's going to change your behavior. It's going to change the way that you speak, the way that you act, the way that you carry yourself. There's no way that a person that, that understands the Quran can carry himself with anything but dignity, with honor. Because this, this, this book is, is, is a Mubarak. So the Mubarak is not just a, what? All the knowledge that's in it and everything that we need to become better people. Is the Quran making you that? Are you benefiting from your time with the Quran? Look at your life and take account of yourselves. We all have to do that, myself included. We have to look and see how we are benefiting. Or are we just reading passively? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the believers that truly recite the Quran. He said, so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, The ones that we gave the book, that they recite it in the correct way. And it doesn't mean in the correct way with tajweed. Here, it means that they do, they follow the commands that they find in the Quran and they stay away from the pro prohibitions that they're using the Quran. When they read the Quran, they're using it as guidance, as a way to control their behavior and the way to, uh, to live their life righteously. This is the people, these are the people that truly, truly recite the Quran. You might sit here and study Tajweed. And you might be able to recite every single haraf and, you know, do all the madud and everything, but you don't even understand what you're reading. What is the benefit? The benefit is that you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you. This is the speech of Allah. You want to be reading an English translation with the speech of Allah? Or do you think the speech of somebody else is more important than the speech of Allah? The speech of some stupid announcer on Al Jazeera gets your attention more than the book of Allah. I can sit back and tell you, ask you what did you see on TV? You can tell me everything that you watched. But when it comes to the book of Allah, you know nothing? Seriously, benefit from the Quran. This Quran is not sent down just to be read, it's sent down to be acted upon. And that's why he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna hadha al-Quran yahdi lillatihi aqwam. If we benefit from this Quran as a community, that we are going to lead this world. We're going to be leaders of this world. But look at us now. Look at our state. Look at the state of the Muslims around the world now. Because what do we do? Just pick up the book, read it, Ramadan's over, toss it back on the shelf to collect dust. This book is meant to be pondered. It's meant to be acted upon. It's meant to be carried out. It's meant all of our judgments and everything we do is by the book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger. 
We don't seek guidance in anything else. And no speech of no other, no, no, no other speech is more important than the speech of Allah. If the speech of Allah cannot hold your attention for even a small period of time, but everything else from these kufar and the movies can hold your attention, what does that say about your heart? You know, their hearts became hard and there became locks on their hearts. Now you, the, the Quran is not even entering your heart. And Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the believers, That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that the hearts start to quake and they start to tremble. When they hear the Quran, they start to ponder on it. And when they hear about the ayat of Jahannam and the punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, their hearts start to tremble. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And if the, if, the, if the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited upon them, what? زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا That their iman increases because they think about what, what, the, what it is like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to them. That their iman increases. وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And these are the people that put their trust in Allah. They truly put their trust in the Lord. These are the believers. This is what we need to be. اللهم جل منهم. وأقول قولي هذا وصفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين وصفره إنه هو غفر رحيم. أنا الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونصلي ونسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى said in the Quran, He said, "قال جاءكم من الله نور وكتاب مبين يهدي به الله من التبع رضوانه سبل السلام ويخرجه من الظلمات إلى النور بإذنه ويهديهم إلى سرّات مستقيم." Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that قَالَ جَاءَكُمْ That is come to you. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nur, a light, a light for the people, a light for your hearts, a light to shine up all the, to, to give you light in this darkness that we, that we live in. The darkness of kufr, the darkness of shirk, the darkness of sin, that we all in the darkness of following the desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this nur, sent down this light to you. وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ and a, and a book that's clear, that's, that clarifies everything that you need to know. Well, the, everything is very made very clear in the Quran. This is what you have to do, and this is what you have to stay away from. This is what you, this is the manners of the Muslim. This is the morals of the Muslim, and this is what you this is what you have to uphold. After that, he said, "Yahdi bihi Allah, man He said, "Allah subhanahu wa taala guides those that follow his, the, what? The, the, the actions, do the things that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa taala." The people that take the Quran, they ponder the Quran, and they act on the Quran, and they implement the Quran in their lives. Those are the people that get the guidance from the Quran. Yahdi bihi Allahu man attaba' radwan hu subul salam and Allah subhanahu wa taala guides them to all the, the paths of all the things that are good. Guides them to the paths of everything that's good. Wa yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila nur bi idnihi and he takes them out from the darkness and brings them into the light. Like I said, the darkness of kufr, the darkness of sin, the darkness of shirk, to the dark, to the to the light of iman, of amal salih, of righteousness, of correct behavior. And it becomes a guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them with this book to the straight path. That's the only way to get on the sirat al-mustaqim. If you sit here and say in every single salat, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. But you're not pondering the Quran, and you're not doing the things that you're supposed to do to get the guidance to get on the Sirat al Mustaqim. Are you being truthful with your du'a? Are you making du'a? Is this like, what, what, are you joking with your du'a every single time that you make this du'a? Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqim, it's like, give me money, but I don't want to work. I don't want to do the things that I have to do, but just guide me for free. You have to put in work. You have to read this Quran, you got to seek the understanding, you got to seek the guidance from the Quran. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Yahya. He said, Ya Yahya, Khud al-Kitab bil-Quwa. Khud al-Kitab bil-Quwa. Wa atainahu al-Hukm al-Sabiyya. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Yahya, Khud al-Kitab bil-Quwa. Don't take the book softly. He said, take this book and act on it bil-Quwa, with strength, 
with all your might, with all your energy, act on this book. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ Al-hukm here, it means that the fi al-deen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him understanding of the book when he was in his young age. And some of the Mufassirin, some of the people, the Tafsir says it means the Nabuwa, but it actually means the Tafakwa, that he gave him understanding of the deen as in, in his young age. And this is what we have to do. We have to seek the guidance in the Quran. We have to implement it. Our lives are, 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 are going to tell the story of whether or not we're honest or we're not honest. Whether we're from the Sadiqeen or Kadibin. Our lives are going to tell that. Because your actions are either going to be in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah, or they're going to be in contradiction and opposition. And you don't want to sit here and just, you just sit here and read the Quran all throughout Ramadan, reading, 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 just so Ramadan can end, so you can go back to the same actions that you were doing before Ramadan that you're supposed to be making toba from, for, uh, from, because now the Quran becomes an evidence against you. And we see this in the Hadith of uh, Abi Malik al Hadith ibn, uh, ibn Asim al Ashari. In which he said, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الطهور شطر الإيمان والحمد لله تملأ الميزان وسبحان الله والحمد لله تملأني أو تملأ ما بين السماء والأرض وصلاة النور وصدقة برهان وصبر ضياء والقرآن حجة لك أو عليك والقرآن حجة لك أو عليك كل الناس يغدو فبايع نفسه فمعتكها أم مبيكها this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. So here he said, at tuhur the purification, shatr al-iman is half of iman. Because we're not just purifying, we're not just purifying our bodies, but we also have to purify our hearts. Because just like we go and purify and make wudu, to clean up or clean our thobe or clean our clothing or clean the places from any type of impurities, we first have to focus on getting the impurities out of our hearts. This love for the dunya, this love for disobedience of Allah, this love for the kuffar, this love for all of these, food, all the, the, all this, this, these impurities that take over our heart and control our heart that cause us not to understand the Quran. This purification has to be from these things first. You purify your body, but you're rotten on the inside. You're clean on the outside, rotten on the inside. What's the benefit? What's the benefit here? It's better to be, what, dirty on the outside and have a clean heart and have a clean body, clean clothes and have a filthy heart. Allah Musta'an. So the tahur shatr al-iman is half of iman, that purification. Dahiran wa batinan, on the outside and on the inside. Alright, walhamdulillah tamla'un mizan. And as saying of alhamdulillah, if you say it but you truly understand it and you truly mean it, you truly, truly mean it. Because you are alhamd is only said with what? With alama. You have to have like ta'zim fi qalbik. If you're reading the Quran and you're not trying to find the guidance of the Quran, you're not saying alhamdulillah bil haq. You're not saying it truthfully. Because there has to be ta'zim. Ta'zim is like now the speech of Allah is the most important speech. Now you say alhamdulillah. You say it with truth, and it fills up the scales on the Day of Judgment. And he says, SubhanAllah, walhamdulillah, tamla'an, al tamla'un mizan. He said, and saying, SubhanAllah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all imperfections, and free from any deficiencies, or free from any, anything. Anything except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in all regards. And he's free from any type of imperfections, and that's the meaning of SubhanAllah. Walhamdulillah, tamla'ani, al tamla'u. Uh, that it fills up between what's between the heavens and the earth. Then he said, salatu nur. They're praying. Your salat is nur, it's light. And he said, wa, wa burhan. And the salafa, you giving in the path of Allah, is an evidence that you are a believer, that you're a true believer. It's a burhan. It's an evidence for you to show that you're a true believer. Because the munafiqun, the people that, of, 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 of hypocrisy, they don't give for the deen. They don't ever give for the deen. They only give for themselves or they give to, to show off to the people. But your giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a show, it is a, shows your iman, is a burhan, evidence of your iman. And then he said, as sabru diya. So here he said that what? as salat nur Well, sabru diya. Nur is light. Diya is light. So what's the difference? A diya is light that has heat, that burns. Nur is light, it doesn't burn. You're praying all the time, you're, you're maintaining your salawat, 
you know, inshallah, the, the salat is what? what Tanhan al fahshay wal munkar. The true salat and praying correctly, it prevents you from doing immoral acts. It prevents you from acting, acting foolish. So how can you get burned up by that? So it's nur. It has no heat in it. But sabr, the ya, the ya is light that has heat. Because sabr requires, it requires you going through pain and suffering. So you get burned up. You get burned up with the trials and tribulations. But it's, a, it's still a diya for you. It's still a light for you. And then he said, well, Quran And he said, the Quran is either an evidence for you or it's an evidence against you. You read the Quran and you're seeking the guidance and you're doing what you're supposed to do. It's an evidence for you. If you just read the Quran and throw it back on the shelf to collect dust, it's an evidence against you. Then after that, he said, Kula Nasi. All of the people, Yaghdu, they go out of their houses early in the day. فَبَعِيُوا نَفْسُهُ And they're selling themselves. فَمُعْتِقُهَا Either to free yourself, أَوْ مُبِقُهَا To destroy yourself. Because when you leave out of the house, you're either acting on the Quran and the Sunnah, you're implementing these in your life. So you're freeing yourself from the, from the hellfire, freeing yourself from the punishment of Allah. Or you're going out and acting contrary to what you read, then it becomes a hajj alayk, and you're what? You're going out every single morning in destruction of yourself. Allah musta'an. Allahumma thabbitna ala hadha deen hatan al-qaqib deen. Rabbana gfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir anna sayyiatina wa tawafana al-ma'al abrar. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhaab al-nar. Subhana rabbika rabbil azati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa aqimu salat.